You know, okay, in life, I have to say this. One of the things I love to do is laugh and then cry. Like, if I can see someone speak and they make me laugh and then later they make me cry, I'm like, yeah. that's, like, very fulfilling for me. And so I was so excited <laughs> to interview the queen of clean, comedian Chanda Pierce. She has done that, made audiences yeah. laugh and then cry. But a lot of people don't know about the struggles she's had with mental illness and the fracture of her family. Take a listen to this. Well, you know, you look at these things that have happened to you, and, and particularly the, maybe the loss of your husband coming from the fact that he, you know, he was an alcoholic yes. and he made some choices that, that may have contributed to his death. Yes, right. Your daughter choosing to cut you off. Yes. You could have made a choice, not just talking about joy now, but I'm talking about bitterness and yes. unforgiveness. You could have made a choice to be very angry, yes. a very angry woman. I have, Are you uh, or have you forgiven You know, them? I remember uh, when I lost my sisters at a young age, I was a teenage girl. Uh, my little sister passed away. I, my big sister passed away. I was 16, and my little sister passed away, and I was 18. Just as I was headed off to college, and when you're 18 or 19, you already think you know everything, anyway. And so that really hit me at a time where some bitterness really did take root. I remember all too well that 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 doesn't work. You know, even on that small scale as a teenager and being angry and questioning God and being frustrated. I was a theater arts major and I was a philosophy minor and I, I used to study all kinds of religions trying to prove my mother wrong, you know, who was this holiness, you know, devout holiness woman. And the more I studied, the more right she was and that made me even more angry. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. Exactly. And I, I remember well enough that emotional roller coaster that it didn't do me any good. And so by the time I had got to about, well, when I got to menopause and my brain was, you know, chemistry was bouncing around anyway, and I was hot flashing for no reason at all, I, I remember the topsy and turvy that my thought life was headed for. And I went and got some help. And I really get, got help with my brain chemistry, with my menopause, trying to keep myself together. One of the greatest things that happened to me is to be put in a psychiatric hospital for deep, deep depression. And I say it was the greatest thing because I learned so much more about who God is in a really dark place than I ever did in the light. Yeah. And, uh, and so I learned that, you know, what I can love about the downtime or the depressed time or that gloom time, that I can still learn to honor Him and love Him because He's worthy and because He's right and because He's God, not because of how He makes me feel. And I think so much we're in a culture that's all about how we feel. If it feels good, do it. You know, come and do that. Re memorize this verse and life is going to feel great to you. And it's not like that. God's not a genie you rub on the side of a lamp. He is the Almighty. And so His ways are kind of His ways. You know, I used to laugh and go, it's kind of His way or the highway. <laughs> and so it's I've noticed that. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of <laughs> easier to cooperate with God than to not because there is the absence of peace and joy and hope. And when there is the absence of those things, I, sometimes you don't have a prayer. So I, I kind of learned some of the, a lot of the things I've learned about the Lord Sadly, I've had to learn the hard way, and he's never run to me and said, I told you so. <laughs> Only my mother did that. <laughs> <laughs> that is God. He will never tell you. I told you so. Oh, well, great. American Music Award winning band Rascal Flats is known for their country sounds, but group member Jay DeMarcus felt comfortable enough to share candidly with Cheryl about some mistakes he's made in his life and what he's learned from God about it. About it. You know, shame and regret, that can really hold us back from really living life. And I know that you have some things you regret. Talk to me about grace, and have you been able to kind of shut shame up, I guess, in a sense, and really just live in the grace of God? Yes, it's tough because I'm human, and you still beat yourself up when you're human. But one of the greatest lessons that I'm learning and that I love is that when you, when you hold yourself hostage over the, your past and the things that you've done, you put too many limitations on grace, which is a gift that none of us deserve in the first place can't do enough to merit the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I was in a band whose name was taken from the scripture that he cast our sins is, as far as the east is from the west into a sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. So we're the only ones that hold on to our past. He lets it go and he forgets it. And all too often, we're too hard on ourselves, I believe, as human beings. Oh yeah because all of us deal with pain and hurt. All of us deal with regret, disappointment. Uh, the good news is there's a way to get through it and there's someone that can help you get through it. And that's the main thing that I want people to take away from this book. 
I'm not preaching to anybody that if you're not a Christian, you're going to hell and you should this and that and other. What I'm saying is there's been something that's helped me in my darkest times, and I hope that you're open enough to consider that it might be a source of strength for you in your own life.